My friends, the time has come to take all these skills that we've acquired in this section and put them into real world subnetting and all the other question types. We've been answering questions about subnets that have already been created and now we get to do it from the very beginning. And we're going to use several of the skills that we've mastered up to this point and I've got a couple of scenarios here for you. The first one being when our client comes to us and says, hey, we're going to use the network 150.50.0.0. We need at least 200 subnets and we want somewhere between 120 and 150 hosts per subnet. Now just by looking at that we know immediately that 150.50.0.0 is a class B network and that's something the client's not going to tell you and Cisco might not tell you either. Now class B networks we know have a 255.255.0.0 network mask or slash 16. So we have 16 network bits, we have 16 host bits and what is subnetting? It is simply the process of borrowing host bits. You're always borrowing zeros, you never borrow ones. So here's what our mask looks like right now. And we can proceed from there. When I'm taking an exam and dealing with a question like this, or if I'm just jotting it out for a practice exam, something like that, i tell you what I like to do. I like to just double the number one and keep going until I get to the desired number of subnets, which is a fancy way of saying two, start with two, and just keep doubling that. So if I need at least 200 subnets, I would just take my marker and my board and just go 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. Now you could write that down. You could do it on your fingers. I think you should keep your shoes on in the exam room, but you could do it on your toes if they let you go in barefooted. Just do it. And it's a great way to get this kind of thing started. Now just a quick note here. Uh, something else I like to do when I go in the exam room is when they hand you a, they're going to hand you a dry erase marker and a dry erase board to do your writing on. Open it right then and there and make sure your marker is good because sometimes they get dry, the ad test administrator doesn't realize it, and you don't want to find out once your clock is running. That's just going to add a little bit of stress and take a little bit of time away from you. So it's something to check out to begin with. But again, I would just write it out, 248, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. So I know that I need eight subnet bits to meet the requirement of at least 200 subnets. That's the lowest number that's going to give me that many subnets. We are not done. Why aren't we done? Why do I have that in bold? Because we were given two requirements. And I'm just going to go back on you a little bit here because just like in the real world, if you get an exam question like this, practice exam, job interview, whatever, if you're given multiple requirements, you have to meet all of them in order to get the question correct. So don't just stop there and say, okay, you know, eight bits, eight uh, subnet bits is going to give me 200 subnets and I'm ready to go. Don't do that. You want to meet the other requirement because what, it, what we are also asked is that each subnet has between 120 and 150 hosts. So if we take a step back and we look at those eight leftover host bits, how many hosts per subnet does that give us? 254, because the number of valid hosts, two to the eighth power here, because we have eight host bits remaining, you gotta subtract the two, but that's 254. That's too many to meet the requirements. But the other requirement was, and I am going back again, so shield your eyes, at least 200 subnets. You know, there's nothing tricky here. They're telling you, or I'm telling you, what we need to do, but you just want to watch whether we're being asked for minimums or maximums or both. So here we were actually given a minimum number of subnets and then a range of hosts per subnet. So what we would do in this situation is borrow one more subnet bit, and we're going to end up looking like this because that gives you nine valid, excuse me, nine subnet bits. So the number of valid subnets, two to the ninth power, 512, the requirement is met. We have at least 200. Then number of valid hosts, two to the seventh power minus that two equals 126 requirement met. So that is the only mask that's going to do the job for us. And in that case, uh, the winning mask can be expressed one of two ways. It's either going to be 255, 255, 255, 128, or slash 25. So it's just that simple. You're just taking skills that you learned earlier in earlier videos in this section, applying them here, and going forward. It is a beautiful thing. And on exam day, you know, you won't even have to write all of it out because you get enough practice in, you're so good at it, you only need it to write out the host bits and then do the subnetting if you wanted to. So let's go through one more here. We're using network 220 
The client wants a minimum of 25 subnets. The client wants no more than six hosts per subnet. How many host bits do we have to work with here? Eight, right? Because that's a class C network if there ever was one. And we know that's got 24 a slash 24 network mask. So that's 24 network bits, eight host bits. And what is subnetting? Borrowing the host bits. So what's the minimum number of host bits we need to borrow to have at least 25 subnets? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 5. So that leaves us three host bits. So what exactly does that do for us? It just meets the requirement because that leaves us three host bits and each, uh, excuse me, each subnet will have two to the third power minus two, which is that six hosts per subnet. So it is a beautiful thing. Here's where we end up. And we end up, there are the 24 network bits. You wouldn't have to write those out on exam day. Just write your fourth octet out because that's the only one we're concerned with at that point. Five subnet bits meets the minimum requirement of subnets. And those three host bits give us exactly six valid hosts per subnet. And that met the requirement. So we are in great shape there. Again, just a few minutes here and a few minutes there really does the trick with subnetting. If you don't want to write out your, if you got five minutes, you don't want to write out your own subnetting question, although you certainly could, uh, you know, just do one with valid hosts. Do valid subnets, because I'm telling you, five minutes here, five minutes there, and you know, you could sit down very quickly in, if you had 10 minutes, and just write, okay, here's the network I'm gonna pretend to be given, here are the minimum number of subnets, here's the maximum number of hosts, that kind of thing, and just keep working with it, because the point is you want to get so good at it, then when you're taking the exam, what's the deal? You're already a CCNA. You're just there to make it official. So we will take a breather from subnetting and such right now and move on to the next section. See you there.